Now that we've covered the symbolic parts of a chemical equation, let's categorize the main types of chemical reactions. And I'll give you an example of each one. Now there are many different ways that we can categorize chemical reactions. Um, the same way that there are many ways that we could categorize uh, cars, for example. Similarly, there are lots of different ways that we could categorize chemical reactions. But at this stage, for our purposes in our class, the way that we're going to use is we're going to use six basic categories. And so the first category that we're going to deal with is combination. Combination. Let me outline that in blue so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Combination. Another term for combination is synthesis. And a combination reaction is when two or more chemical substances combine into one substance. And as the example, I'll give you the one that we did right up here. We have two chemical substances combining, reacting to combine one product. So this is an example of a combination reaction. So I'm just going to point up to that one as an example. The next type of chemical reaction is the decomposition. A decomposition reaction is when one chemical substance breaks apart into two or more substances. So it's basically the reverse of a combination reaction. As an example, let's take water. We're going to take liquid water and we're going to pass a significant amount of electricity through it and we're going to decompose that water molecule by breaking it apart into two substances, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So there's your decomposition. Now I need to balance this, and we will talk more about balancing here in a moment, but I'm just going to do it very quickly. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens. One oxygen, two oxygens. Two oxygens now. Four hydrogens. Now I have four hydrogens. Two oxygens, two oxygens, and it's balanced. As the third basic type of a chemical reaction we're going to use here. It's single replacement. A single replacement reaction. A single replacement reaction occurs when a single standalone element reacts with a compound and replaces an atom in that compound. So, a good example of this is one of, one of my favorite single replacement reactions is when we take copper solid and we react it with a compound, silver nitrate, which is in aqueous solution. And the single standalone copper is going to react with that compound and it's going to replace the silver. So it's basically going to kick the silver out of the compound and take its place. So the silver is now going to become the single standalone element and the copper is now going to take its place in a compound with the nitrate ion. And it just so happens that when it does this the copper is going to form a copper 2 plus and therefore we need two nitrates to charge balance with the copper. Now you can't always tell that that's going to happen, but in this case I'm just letting you know that that's going to form a copper 2 plus. 
So again, single replacement, the single standalone atom in this case, reacts with the compound, kicks out one of the atoms, and takes its place. I need to balance this, one copper, one copper, one silver, one silver, one nitrate, two nitrates. So now I have two nitrates, one copper, one copper, two silvers, two silvers, two nitrates, two nitrates, and it's balanced. So there's a single replacement reaction. The next example is a double replacement reaction. A double replacement reaction is also called a precipitation reaction. And I will often refer to it as a double replacement precipitation reaction. So in a double replacement precipitation reaction, two compounds are reacting with each other and they're going to switch partners. The cation in one ionic compound is going to switch places with the cation of the other compound so that they basically switch partners. And when they do that, one of the substances that is formed is no longer soluble and precipitates out as a solid. So an example of this, I could take some lead to nitrate dissolved in solution and I could react it with some potassium iodide dissolved in solution. So I'm reacting two ionic compounds. And what's going to happen here is the cation here, the lead 2 cation, is going to replace the potassium cation here. So it's going to form a new compound by pairing up with that anion. And similarly, the potassium is now going to be paired up with nitrates. If this is a lead 2 and it's going to be paired up with an iodide which has a minus charge, then I need two of those iodides and this forms a solid and precipitates out. The remaining compound is potassium pairing up with a nitrate anion. Potassium is plus 1, nitrate is a minus 1, so I check the charges. I only need one of each. And notice here that I only have one nitrate in this formula. So I do not use parentheses. The only time that I use parentheses are around a polyatomic ion when I have a subscript immediately following them showing that I have more than one of them in the formula. I don't have that here. So I'm not going to use the parentheses on that. This is soluble, so it is aqueous. And now I have to balance this. One lead, one lead. Two nitrates, two nitrates. One potassium, two potassiums. So I need two potassiums here. Two iodides, two iodides. One lead, one lead, two nitrates, two nitrates, two potassiums, two potassiums, two iodides, two iodides, and it's balanced. All right, the fifth basic type of chemical reaction is called an acid-base neutralization. An acid-base neutralization is when an acid and a base react together, and that when they do, then the acid and the base are neutralized. They are no longer as acidic or basic as they were. And in most cases that we are going to see, one of the products of an acid-base neutralization 
is water will be formed. Not always, but often. So here's an example. I'm going to take an acid right here. We recognize it's an acid, H and AQ. And I'm going to react it with a base. And most often, the bases that I have are going to have a hydroxide ion in them. Our strong bases will have the hydroxide ion. So there's your acid, there's your base. And when they react, the hydrogen from the acid is going to pair up with the hydroxide from the base, and you're going to get this molecule. Well, I've drawn it this way so that you can recognize that the hydrogen from the acid is right there. The hydroxide from the base is right there but we know this is a water molecule. Of course, this forms a liquid water. And then the sodium, the cation of the base, pairs up with the anion, the chloride of the acid. Sodium chloride, which of course is also water soluble. And if I check through here, I'll see that everything is balanced. One hydrogen from the acid, one hydrogen from the acid. One chloride, one chloride. One sodium, one sodium. One OH from the hydroxide ion of the base. And one OH in the water molecule that came from that base. And you may see why I am writing the water molecule this way, because it also helps me balance the reaction, because I can track where the hydrogen from the acid went and where the OH from the base went. And there's my acid-base neutralization. The last basic reaction type I'm going to cover is the combustion reaction. And generally speaking, a combustion reaction is when some kind of fuel reacts with an oxidizer. And usually for our class, the fuel that we're going to use is a hydrocarbon. That is a chemical compound that contains both hydrogen and carbon. And the oxidizer is oxygen, usually the oxygen that's in the air. So basically we're going to be burning something, which is why we call it a combustion reaction. And for the purposes of this class, the products of a combustion reaction will always be water and carbon dioxide. So I'm going to take an example here of a fuel that we are familiar with. We may not be familiar with its formula or its name, but CH4, this is a gas, it's called methane, and this is what we burn in our Bunsen burners in the lab. So we're going to react this methane, which is a hydrocarbon, with the oxidizer, the O2 gas, in the atmosphere, in the air. So we have our hydrocarbon and the oxidizer, the oxygen gas. When they react, they're going to form water and carbon dioxide. Now water could be a liquid here, but probably if I'm burning this at high temperature, it's probably going to come out as a vapor, as a gas. So, methane gas is burning in air and reacting with oxygen in air. And my two products that are formed are water, vapor, and carbon dioxide gas. Let me make sure that it's balanced. One carbon, one carbon. Four hydrogens. Four hydrogens. 
two oxygens, and notice that now that I have two oxygens here and two more there, so I have four oxygens over here on the product side, so I need four oxygens on the reagent side, and there we go. And now it's balanced. Now, I'll make a quick note here to say that for the purposes of our class, a combustion reaction will always have these two products, and it will be a predictable reaction in that regard. However, in real life, combustions don't just produce water and carbon dioxide. They can produce carbon as soot. They can produce carbon monoxide, and there can be all, all kinds of other reactions that take place uh, with uh, impurities that may be in the fuel. But for our purposes, we're just going to assume that if we have a combustion reaction, we're going to be generating water and carbon dioxide. Okay, there's the six basic types. We have combination and decomposition, which are reverse processes of each other. Combination combines substances, decomposition decomposes them. Notice that there is no such thing as a decombination reaction. Instead, we use the term decomposition to mean breaking apart. Then we have single replacement and double replacement precipitations. Then we have an acid-base neutralization which can be thought of as a special kind of double replacement reaction because the cation of the acid is now pairing up with the anion of the base. And then we have combustion reactions. These are our six basic types of chemical reactions and it will be important for you to recognize the type of chemical reaction that you're dealing with. And of course, practice will help you do that. Being able to recognize the type of chemical reaction that you're working with will help you predict the products. If you know, for example, that you're working with a single replacement reaction, it will help you determine what your products are going to be. Now, for the last four types of chemical reaction, single replacement, double replacement, acid-base neutralization, and combustion, those four are predictable. And by that I mean if you are given the reagents, you can predict the products. So these four are predictable. But the first two the combination and decomposition, you cannot always predict what the products are going to be unless you just happen to be familiar with that particular reaction. So if you are given just the reagents and you're asked to predict the products, then it must be one of these four chemical reaction types because they are the only ones that you can predict the products of. You know it's not a combination to decomposition reaction. 